Okay, today I'm going to record some footage of another kind of unusual bootleg title. This is Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Color, developed by Weixing, well, however you pronounce their name, I don't really speak Chinese, uh, developed by Weixing. They actually did it, the Chinese translation of Fire Emblem Gaiden for uh, the Famicom. That was a bootleg translation, by the way. They they obviously didn't have the license to do that. But anyway, Waxing was obviously pretty familiar with Fire Emblem Guidance code, so it seemed like they went ahead and <laughs> just poured the whole thing to Game Boy Color, and the results, uh, they're hit or miss, but it, it's an interesting title, so I'd like to uh, play through a bit for you so you can kind of check it out. right away uh did leave in the little rpg sections in so you can move around freely with om and talk to characters the uh graphics look pretty good but animations feel a little bit off i think they might have cut some frames in the character movements or something Also, uh, game just sounds awful. They cut the whole soundtrack, and uh, there's only like two or three tracks now. None of them are very good. This is probably the best one, and it's the one we'll hear the least, so... so unfortunate. Now here we'll be encountering the first uh, major change of this game. There's only one villager. And unfortunately, that villager is Robin, aka Tobin. He's by far the worst villager in the original game. But, uh, pretty tight on characters, so, I mean, we're gonna use him. Here's the interface. I actually kind of like what they did with the characters, uh,. They uh, change directions based on uh, based on where they're facing, and the movement interface is kind of like Shining Force for the Sega Genesis. It's, it doesn't look pretty, but it works pretty well, and it's kind of fluid. We can't check the movement ranges of our enemies, unfortunately. That's kind of one of the drags of this thing. Uh, User in interface for a game that's so stat reliant like Fire Emblem is, we actually don't get to see many of the stats. We get to see level, experience, and HP, and we only get to see the s their stats between battles, and we don't get to see enemy stats at all. So, and there's the internet to look stuff like that up, but. Uh, it's really inconvenient and makes the game a lot tougher to play. Now we'll get to see the battle animations. They look terrible. They're definitely cutting some frames here or something. Alms is one of the better ones. It sort of looks like it did in the Famicom version. Uh, Luca's is a little bit more unfortunate looking. Oh dear. <laughs> that's. That's just not good looking. After the first battle, the entire. This is the song that I'll play for the rest of the battle, and it's just ear bleeding. Anyway, I'll be turning the animations off just to speed up gameplay. Without having to rely on a fast forwarding, which will make this even harder to listen to. Let's have at it. Like in vanilla, we'll want to be leveling up Robin slash Tobin. You can't promote unless he's level three. Oh boy, this guy's uh, this guy's tough. He's level two. Already seeing some changes from uh, the original one here. This 
game does a reasonable impression of Fire Emblem Guided, but as you can see pretty immediately that it's not the exact same game by any stretch of the imagination. There's a lot of just very small changes that kind of add up, and in the end, they're really not the exact same game, The core game is basically the same, but... You're not going to be playing this very often. Very much thinking that, uh, if you're actually playing Gaiden for the Famicom, like, it's rarely apparent they're different. I think a lot of misses here. Don't know if the hit rates are different. Critical rates are definitely way different than. Love experience. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, Robin's getting close to level 3. Let's gag up on this guy and bring him down. get a uh, decent sounding music for about five seconds. So this is the first battle where we'll really be missing our uh, missing Gray and Cliff. Having an extra body actually does matter. It makes the early portions of the game reasonably Reasonable a bit more challenging. Like, this isn't like... Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon H5 or anything, but... It's definitely a small step up from Vanilla at this point in the game. Critical hit rate does seem to be a bit higher in this game compared to vanilla. Uh, definitely can't tell you what the formula is, besides telling you that it's different. I've been critical hit by these like generic schmoes, so I don't know if it's like a flat rate or if there's a high like floor critical hit rate, but it gets higher with skill and luck. I'm just not quite sure yet. We want to keep our units on uh, forest tiles as much as possible just to save HP. We're taking a lot of damage and not really a ton of ways to redistribute that damage or just spread out that damage because there just aren't very many units that we have at our disposal. Alright, let's see if we can finish uh, this bandit off to. Get Robin to level 3. <laughs> and a stat. Alright, what's this guy at? 10 HP. likely to finish him off, so I'll leave him be for now. Uh, this guy's actually running away, so he better finish him off with bomb. Another, like, pet peeve thing this game does that I don't love is it lowers Om's movement to 4 from 5. And that 5th movement was really one of his strong points in the original game, so kind of sad to see it go. Can't take something like that for granted, for sure. Alright. Is that a 
11 at 10 at 10. Okay, let's let's get dangerous here. All right, one down. Another level up. It's nice. We'll probably want to try and get Luca up to a level seven at one point, just so he can become a knight. Knights are just super beefy. It's not a super great class, but eh. never hurts to have a unit that can deal and take a lot of damage. In a game that's so common, reliant as a Fire Emblem Gaiden. the Bandit Cave. So far, games playing pretty similar. These are a little tougher, and we're missing uh, the two good villagers, but eh. I do like that the interface moves a lot faster when you're uh, controlling movement. I'm gonna move Rowan back. He's not very likely to level up, so uh, leave the experience for the guys will actually get to keep it. The experience form is also very slightly different. I don't know if they beefed it up to like lower overall enemy density or what, but it seems like some of the amounts we've seen are higher than what you'd expect in Guided Vanilla. Silk, and I'm gonna actually save here. We can do that through the game's built-in save function. Kind of neat. And I just want to make sure that uh, I give the right stat bonus. Uh, like in vanilla, I prefer giving plus three speed to Silk, so she can double more easily with her Nosferatu skill. That way she can actually, like, level up and learn warp. This is her right here. 8 strength, 3 skill, 4 speed. Let me make sure I have the right one here. And after this, if I did it correctly, she should be up to 7. Which will mean she'll double most of the early enemies. Strength, three skill, seven speed. All right, we'll save again. And now I need to make sure that I promote a Robin to the mercenary class. That way he'll get to use the Thunder Sword, which is one of the best weapons in the game. Um can use it as well, but he's a little bit slow with it since it has a high weapon weight. And uh, mercenaries are very fast class, so Robin should be able to one round a lot of enemies with it. Become very powerful very quickly. Okay, it looks like I promoted Robin to a soldier. 
I mean, I'll, uh, I'll go into battle and double check, but it looks like I did not choose the correct one. Oh no, Robin's a cavalier. Well, that's still not gonna do it for me, so keep resetting. Alright, he's a cavalier again. Let's keep trying. I have a problem with not knowing the language. But fortunately, you can still kind of force your way through just with trial and error. Okay, that's, uh, that's Cavalier. Let's see. I believe this is Soldier, but, uh, I'll go ahead and click on it and make sure. Yeah, I think that's gonna be Soldier. Oh. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll try and make sure, but I think, based on the stack games, we're gonna have to reset again. Yeah, that's Soldier. Womp womp. Alright, what we got? Cavalier, no. Soldier, no. I believe this is mercenary. Yep, we gained six and four of stuff, so, uh... That should be skill and speed, and... That should be mercenary. For Robin here. Yep, eight, eight, ten, four, four. Looks like mercenary stat spread, so we'll go ahead and save and enter the next battle. I'll save it to the second spot in case I messed up, but I think we're good. So now I get to face uh, the infamous Iron Shield Mercenary boss, or Leather Shield Mercenary boss. We're really not going to be able to hurt him with the uh, physical weapons, so... We'll, uh, we'll figure something out. Ooh, this cursor's a little bit slow. There are a lot of enemies here. We're gonna take some damage. Uh... We do have Silk to regain some HP back, so we won't really be in any huge danger for a while, but we do want to make sure no single character gets mobbed and ganged up on. We also want to keep all of our guys alive to help with the boss. Uh, they're going to need to take some hits from the mercenary, so... Uh, so can Nosferatu it from afar. Alright. Fortunately, can't quite get to this uh, defense tile, but eh. Definitely keep our eye on that archer too. That can be a problem. We will set this up so no one can get ganged up on except for Silk. We actually want Silk to be attacked because of her uh, Nosferatu skill can heal any damage that she would take. Also, she gets a lot of experience for fighting, and we don't want that experience so she can learn warp. Speed things up later, for sure. Alright, 
Uh, the, uh, since I reset the game, the animations came back on. Oh, a pretty cool fit. Nice. Animations, I mean, they're not the worst thing ever since uh, the sprites are sold from the NES game, but they're definitely very disjointed. Uh, assuming they kind of cheat on some of the frames. are definitely a very small hair tougher than in the original game. And I think that's mostly just the early game bandits. Uh, I think their base attack is a little bit higher. His almond crew have the same base stats. Alright, let's get these animations off. Hit rate definitely seems a hair higher. Asperado hit rate might be higher too, but not not completely sure, just a hunch. I feel like I double with it more successfully more often in this game than vanilla. Sprout had like a 50% hit rate in the original game, so uh, the fact that it's able to hit consistently at all, since it might have been, it might have buffed it up a little bit. Let's see if we have any low hanging fruit kills here. Not really. If we draw a miss, I'll finish a guy off. Everyone's good enough on HP that I don't feel uh, bad attacking with Silk here. Mercenary's still pretty far off, uh, so we'll have a few turns to mess around and heal up. No double misses from Silk. May they may they increase the accuracy of that attack by a little bit. Wouldn't be a bad idea. 50% is pretty obnoxiously low. Even if it even if it makes clerics a little more uh, durable than they should be, like they kind of need to do damage to level up. We'll start going to town on this uh, mercenary here. Mm, these guys are so low on HP. Is I hope Silk doesn't die. <laughs> That's where I'm in big trouble. Oh my gosh. The critical hit. Well, 
there isn't permit permadeath in this game, so uh, we might still be able to finish this all right. It's gotta be annoying though, that's for sure. Thirteen HP, yeah. We're still doing damage to him, so uh, Om should be able to get to him eventually. We're probably gonna lose some experience here for sure. I think that's alright. Let's retreat these two guys. We don't have terrible luck. Should be able to just finish them off with who we have. And we might be having terrible luck. <laughs> oh boy. And that is, what, four straight misses? I mean... Not really sure what to say to that, except we're probably gonna have to restart. And what I'll do is I'll... Gonna have to retreat with on to this uh, healing tile on the top. And then hope we get luckier with uh, misses. He just needs to not hit us twice in a row. Okay, freaking critical hit him. That was ugly, but we won. We lost a ton of experience, but uh, eh. life goes on. Om has the leather shield here. Uh. That's probably fine. Maybe I'll get to Robin so he can uh, take a few more hits. Again, we can still uh, trade away items just like in the original game. No changes in that regard. Yeah, there's no permadeath in this game, but on the other hand, every character dies, their experience is reset to zero, so... Kind of a bummer that just both of our characters happen to be at like 60 or 70, 70 experience points. That is back a little bit. Just have a Steel Bow Archer in this game, but uh... Likely he doesn't... Luckily, he doesn't like to camp around, so uh, we'll be able to face him on this side of the board.
Yeah, I meant to attack there. Oh well. Critical hit. Interesting. Alright, I think we are gonna want to start healing with Silk at one point here. Uh, even though I'd like to her to attack. We just want to play it safe when we can. Don't lose any experience that we don't have to lose. Best to do that. Well, we'll uh, steal some HP here. Zero stat level up from Bird, the Robin. Not an unusual sight. For this game, I'm like in Vanilla Fire Emblem Gaiden. Uh, there's no uh, there's no minimum stat gain, so zero statters are not too uncommon in this one. In the original game, uh. Whenever you'd gain zero stats, you gain one HP instead. Just for the record. Hopefully we can set up a kill for Silk here. Not the end of the world if Bird gets a kill too. Alright, we picked up the uh, steel bow there. Won't be able to use it yet. We'll get an archer soon enough, like in the original game. There is a Thunder Sword still in the game, and Clea slash Claire also still in the game. Let's uh, juggle some items around, shall we? Let's see. Like Silk has a steel bow right now, that's fine. Uh, Om has a thunder sword. We'll want to give that to. Uh, want to give that sword to uh, Robin. 
And then we'll want to give the shield to Claire. That way she can start battle, even though her base defense is not very good. With that plus three from the leather shield, she should fit right in and start helping like everyone else. Alright, we'll save. And we will save on accident. Map's basically the exact same as in the original. Strategy is pretty much the same as before, I just spread damage out, nuke a bunch of knights with uh, Robin, and maybe try and sneak a couple kills in with Claire because uh, it'll be nice if we can get her to the Falco Knight class later in the game. Pretty strong uh, promotion for sure. Of course, we'll be uh, prioritizing this archer uh, just because archers are a pain in the neck. That archer is down. Uh, Silk is invincible for all intents and purposes, so we will get rid of it first. Uh, miss. Unfortunate. Let's attack this thing with Silk and hope she doesn't die. Really do want to get rid of it. Oh, and she died. I'm just gonna reset. This isn't like an Iron Man or anything, so uh. I don't care about taking risks in the early turns. Again, I'm gonna have to turn uh, animations off. I don't remember which of these is animation, so I'll just talk them both off. gonna prioritize this archer. Really want to get rid of it. It's so mean to Silk. And once that archer's down, Silk's practically invincible due to Nosferatu, so... Eh. Might as well. That brings her up to level 3. I don't really care about anything else here. If 
I can set up a kill for for uh, Claire, I'll definitely take one, but there's nothing there at the moment. health is at. Alma is getting a little low there, so... I'll heal him up with Silk. But surely. Alright, I have a couple more guys we can finish off here. And set up well for Claire. Silk should be able to do eight here. We got we got a soldier. I think Rob can handle that. Look at all gaining stats. Isn't it nice to have growths in this game? Wow, three stat for Robin. Don't see that very often. Of course, it's probably like HP, skill, and luck, or some nonsense like that, but, eh, stats are stats. Definitely like all those chapters where people are just like, yeah, map design in this game isn't great. There's a whole lot of watching things move and not a bunch of actual fighting. Basically, 80% or so of the map serves absolutely no purpose at all. It's super awkward. I'm good with Claire just handling these two clowns on the bottom left. I can always retreat her if she gets in trouble.
Ooh, critical hit. Yeah, that's a to start retreating next turn. It's a little scary. Alright, here they come. Not scary, but they're coming. This thing's got to be too uh, too high HP to take down with Silk, I think. Guess I'll give it a good poke anyway. That was not a smart decision by this knight. for Silk. Oh, critical hit. Alright, if this works out right, we can get uh, one more kill for Claire here. So there's some auto movement options in this game, and this is as good a chapter as any to take advantage of them.
We will go ahead and heal up a uh, Robin here. This doesn't lose any experience. Yeah, there's just not much going on in this battle, so I'll just let the enemies uh, take care of themselves for the most part. Wow, a rare double miss by Syl. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, I don't think that puts her in death range or anything, since we're pretty low on enemies now. Another one down, we'll recruit some peeps. Get a what's-his-name, the Cavalier, and what's-his-name, the Archer. None of our units can promote yet, so that Angel Statue isn't actually going to help us very much. Oh, we get to do some uh, stat buffs here. The Lionhead bonuses, uh... While these is attack and while these is defense, so I'm probably just gonna buff up on this defense. 11, 8, 7, 8, 7. Okay, that was the strength lion head, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset. Hopefully this is the defense right here. Alright, 11, 8, 7, 8, 8. Nom, like, doesn't especially need defense, but it's nice to have for later on. Uh, he is our only source of getting a game over, so... Having a durable alm, it's just a nice uh, quality of life thing you can do for your team. I'll give uh, our archer his steel bow. He'll be the last guy on our list, so we'll move Silk's bow over to him. There's no longer a star next to it, meaning he can equip it. And we should be ready for the final battle here. This will be the first battle in the game where it's actually fought in waves. Due to limit limitations, I don't know if it's an actual hardware limitation or if it's just limitation of this game's engine. Uh, I can only just play so many enemies at a time, so... We actually aren't gonna have to deal with the archers fight yet, we're just gonna have to get rid of these, uh, cavaliers up there. Which way is quicker for us? Uh... I guess we'll take the left. Open the door with, uh, Claire. Archers will spawn eventually, but... Thank you. 
actually don't remember if characters can open doors in this game, so I am gonna feel pretty dumb if, uh, this doesn't work successfully, but, ah, well. It wouldn't be the first mistake I made. As you can see, uh, Claire did not open that door, so I selected charge and all my units are just like kind of going where the enemy units are, I guess. And it might be time to use some turbo, honestly. That that maneuver set us back several turns. Since we reset, I am going to turn the animations back off. I'd love to have Claire just stick around and fight, but unfortunately, uh, Claire's just gonna get torn apart by pal that Paladin, so we'll have to hold off on that for now. I might be able to handle the Paladin okay, so we can try that at least. Alright, fast forwarding. should be safe from the Paladin in this spot, so I'm gonna go ahead and have her, uh, start poking some Cavaliers here. Just out of range. Still pretty strong. This is kind of his chapter to shine. He isn't great for very long, but... Level 6 Cavalier does pretty well against lower level ones, that's for sure. That's why I really would rather give the experience to Silk. give the kill to, uh, anyone else, so... Let's see if we can bait it with Silk. Oh, 
Oh, I can- I guess we can finish him off, Claire. That's not tragic. close to warp. Let's start chipping away at that boss, too. Fortunately, can't quite double. You can really hurt him. There we go, boss down. spawn here. So what we got? We got the soldier, we got the couple archers, we got the knight, sage, and a couple more archers. Nothing too scary, uh. Archers might kill five, but he's kind of already served his purpose already. Five's good for now. Okay, then. Still darken when they're done moving, but they do stop uh, their animation, so we can tell all their turns have ended. Hmm. Interesting attack there. attack from 4 range to stay out of range of the enemy archer.
me. I don't... still don't think I care if Clive dies this chapter. I'll just, uh... get Silken to help handle the sage. like to take down all his archers, oh well. Oh, I guess we can still try. There we go. A little risky there, but risk paid off. not have done that. Well, no punishment, but not a great move either. Orange can be a deceptively lot. Straggler of an archer here, and I think we're good. Fortunately, Claire's too low HP to actually deal with it herself. So. Teamwork should get it done, though. Chapter 1. Pretty similar so far. Pick up this horse slayer on our way out. And uh, we'll do a first battle of Chapter 2 uh, just to show it off. For now, that will be uh, Fire Emblem Gaiden for the Game Boy Color. Playing imperfect, but honestly, not a terrible port of Fire Emblem Gaiden for 
what is a completely different system. Well, a different system, not completely different. They they share some similarities for sure. There's a Bowie with a sister sprite. Silka has 8 strength, 6 giggles, 6 speed, so we'll give her some lion head bonuses. She'll be the only character we really use long term. Let's see, that one buffed up her attack. We'll give her a couple speed on the other one. Basically, the logic for feeding all the lion heads to uh, Silica. Jenny is fine with Adam. Uh, Bowie's terrible, no matter uh, if it's lion head bonuses or not. And May, I mean, they'll help her out early on, but eh, she's fine with Adam. And again, we won't be using her past the first couple chapters. Silica can still both use her sword and use magic. Kind of cool that they let that in. Overall, as Silka's chapter. Much easier relative to the Famicom version than the Omroot, since uh, Om loses multiple party members and Silica basically has her full team. Honestly, we'll be focusing on leveling up Silica and uh, Jenny here. May doesn't really need to level up at all, and Bowie. Bowie's Bowie. He's a body when we need him, but we don't need a body when we're just like grinding in zombies. They're pretty weak. Zombies are like a slight threat to Silica, but they aren't gonna. They're not gonna kill Jenny by any stretch of imagination. They need to, like, run critical hits. Zombies don't give a ton of experience points, so it's kind of tempting to just feed them to Jenny, honestly. I guess she gets some pretty good experience whether she uh, gets an actual kill or she just weakens them.
Silk is getting, what, 7 per kill? Let's see what Jenny gets for finishing one off here. 16? I mean, it's a little better. I mean, I guess Jenny can just have all my... Silk is not growing a whole lot. Oh my gosh. Critical hit. There's no permadeath. Man, that is... That's certainly some experience points lost. Uh, Saber's still in the house, too. But, I mean... I'm gonna call it a chapter from... Or a... I'm gonna call it a video from here. Still talk to a couple NPCs here. Kinda neat. But... Okay, that is Weixing's Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Guidance for the Game Boy Color. Has some issues, it sounds pretty bad, but eh, gameplay's mostly there, and it's not a terrible simulation of Fire Emblem Guidance. Alright, well, thanks for watching. I will see you next video.